Hello there. I want to give you an update on the status of Alzheimer's therapy. Alzheimer's disease is one of the most devastating pathologies for both the victims and their families. Even more disturbing is the trend. Today, over 26 million have the disease worldwide, a number expected to increase fourfold by the year 2050. Some 20 years ago, British scientist Dr. John Hardy postulated that beta amyloid plaque is the cause of Alzheimer's disease. Ever since, Big Pharma has invested literally billions in drug research that resulted in the number of drugs that actually and successfully dissolved beta amyloid plaque. Yet, not one of these drugs restored the cognitive functions of patients. Indeed, post-mortem biopsies showed that there was no correlation between the degree of dementia and the amount of amyloid plaque. The brains of patients with severe dementia showed little or no detectable plaque, while the brains of patients with little or no mental deficits showed huge amounts of amyloid. In other words, if the drugs did the job dissolving amyloid plaque, yet the patient's cognitive functions did not improve, the probability is high that beta amyloid is not the cause of Alzheimer's, which leaves the option open that it is the result. Indeed, the work of Dr. Beresliff Slokovich and Dr. Mark Smith cast doubt on Dr. Hardy's theory. In case you are not familiar with forensic math, allow me to introduce you to Bayes' theorem. Don't be intimidated. Bayes is as simple as it gets. If a set of events has the same outcome as the previous identical set of events, the probability increases that future sets will conform. In practical terms, Big Pharma ran clinical trials on several hundred patients. The outcome in each case was identical. No cognitive improvement. Next, post-mortem biopsies repeatedly did not show a correlation between dementia and the plaque amount. On the base theorem, the probability that beta amyloid plaque is the cause of Alzheimer's disease is near zero. Indeed, experts have pointed out that there are other causes of dementia. The NIE, for example, points to the possibility that a vascular dysfunction may be a key element in Alzheimer's. Nature medicine has it about right. Vascular damage causes neuroinjury, resulting in neurodegeneration. Enters ADT5, my drug for the prevention, delay and treatment of dementia. Here are the theories ADT5 is based on. The human brain requires oxygen and nutrients to function properly. If the brain is deprived of oxygen, the human dies. If the brain is partially deprived of oxygen, neurons die or are being damaged and the brain loses its ability to function properly. This is well established. Oxygen is supplied to the brain via serum, i.e. the blood. Serum is supplied to the brain via the vascular structure. If the vascular structure is impaired, so is the serum oxygen supply. Let's look for a second at a typical plaque-infested artery. You do understand that oxygen and nutrients reach the brain tissue through the vessel valves. It does not require a rocket scientist to understand that vascular plaque interferes with the oxygen-nutrient exchange. Moreover, vascular plaque reduces the endothelial diameter of the blood vessel, resulting in a lower blood flow meaning we reduce the oxygen nutrient supply again. Just look at a real life example of vascular plaque. Now, you do understand that the brain has about 20%, that is one-fifth of the body's blood supply. ADT5 targets aggressively the problem of an impaired microcirculation in the brain. No more and no less. It does so first of all by making the vessel walls elastic 
and by increasing the endothelial lumen diameter so as to get more serum, i.e. more oxygen through the brain. Once that is achieved, and it has to be done very carefully, ADT5 targets aggressively LDL-HDL levels by triggering a reverse cholesterol transport to the liver. Let me show you the HDL chart, HDL is the good cholesterol, for a typical real-life case. For years, the patient used gemfibrosil to manage a healthy lipid spectrum to no avail. Over three years, his HDL levels fell to almost catastrophic levels. Taking niacin alone did search. His HDL stayed way down. ADT3 at the time followed. And voila, within six weeks, his HDL shot up like a rocket. Oh, I get it. That's where rocket science comes in, right? Indeed, starting in week four, each test subject during the preliminary clinical trials experienced a dramatic restoration of his cognitive functions. For anyone who never experienced that, this is difficult to understand, I know. Let's talk about neuroregeneration for a sec. Here's my theory. During the first three to four weeks, the brain, its oxygen supply restored, began to regenerate neurons and did so on a massive scale and eventually was working with a dramatic speed. This is absolutely no surprise as the brain's plasticity is well known. Indeed, if you Google brain plasticity discovery, you may come across a video clip on YouTube that shows the result of brain surgery where one half of the brain had to be removed. Yet, the little girl managed to walk out of the hospital and eventually regained all motoric function. She was intellectually alert almost immediately. So don't despair, we are working on it. Oh, and no offense, but the scientists should really be familiar with Bayes' theorem. In case you are not, I wrote a book about it. It is in print and available at Amazon. Take care.